Hi there, I'm Eitan and welcome to Wix Fixer. Today I'm going to try and cover everything that you need to know about data collections in Wix. So let's get started. Okay, so first thing, let's talk about how you would add a data collection to your website. So first of all, you'd go over here on the left side in the editor where you have Content Manager. And then over here, you'll see different options. And one of them is to create a collection. So you'll click on that. And then you will be asked to name your collection. So I'll just call this one test. I already have a collection called test. So I'll call this one collection example, because that's what we're doing today. And this will have multiple items. You can also choose a single item, uh, but usually you will have multiple items inside of a collection. And then you just click create and your collection will be created. So what actually is a collection? A collection is the way that Wix lets us store and manage data for our website, because often uh, we will want to have data that is dynamic uh, and can change over time. And we can use that to make our website more versatile and more flexible. So for example, if you have a picture on your website and that picture is linked to data, then you can just change the data and the picture will change instead of you having to go into the drag and drop editor and change out that picture. Or for example, if you have people filling out forms, then you already have collections on your website. Um, your members app is a collections, your events, your bookings, everything is managed using collections. Uh, you might not have been able to look under the hood before, or you might not have needed to, but that is how Wix uh, manages data. And that's essentially your database for your website. And once you open a collection, so the first thing you'll actually want to do is to go over here to more actions and go to your collection permissions and privacy. And this is a very important part of collections because it basically decides who can access this database and who can change the information in it. And you have four different things that you can do to a database. One is to view the content or view the data. One is to add content. One is to delete content. And one is to update content. And each one of these, you can decide if you're giving it permissions, permissions means like the ability to do that action on the database to a certain number of people. One is the admin, uh, somebody who is the website owner. And then we have site member author, which I'll talk about in a second. We have site member. So that means that anybody who is a member on your website will be able to manipulate the data in that way. And anyone means absolutely anybody can change that. And site member author means the person who created that specific item in the data set. And let me try and give you different examples of when you would use each one. So admin would be something that you only want the admin to be able to do. For example, let's say content on the website. So you don't want anybody to be able to manipulate the pictures on your website or the text on your website. Um, so this is something that usually you only give access to the admin. Um, on the other hand, let's say a form that's supposed to um, generate leads on your website. So you're going to want to let anyone on your website add content. That's that would be over here. You'll want to let anyone add content to a form on your website because only then will they be able to submit the form. If somebody does not have the ability to add content, then they wouldn't be able to submit a form which added content to your collection. Um, so that's kind of an explanation about permissions. And it's not like if you set a permission to anyone, that means anybody will easily be able to do that to your collection. It just means that somebody with a little bit of web development knowledge will technically be able to do that if they try to. Uh, and this is very important for protecting your data because, for example, if you set can delete content to anyone, then potentially a malicious user or even if you set up your code in the wrong way, you can allow people to 
completely erase data from your website and then that is obviously back. Uh, so this is a bit about permissions and this is pretty much the first thing that you're going to want to do when you are dealing with a data set. Okay, let's hop in and look at our actual data set and you'll see here that it looks pretty much like a table and each of our uh, rows is called an item and this item is a group of data fields okay uh, the fields are the columns so we only have one field here that's called title and these rows are items which aggregate together fields that are related to that specific item okay so for example this title could be somebody's name let's say john okay and then i can add another field by clicking this plus button over here and i'm prompted to select a field type so the basic field type is text and that basically means that that field can be text and whenever you try and put something into that field or save something to that field from your website it'll be converted into text uh, and after you select your field type you're prompted to give the field a name uh, so for example let's call this city okay the city where john lives and you'll see over here that you have a field, a field key which is generated automatically. Um, and you could change that, but once you save this field, you won't be able to change it again. And you'll see that it starts with lowercase because this is the key that we will be using in our code. Uh, and this is if I want to be able to reference this field in our code, then we're going to need to use this key and not the name that you give it. The name you can always change, but the key is locked once you save the field. So I'm going to click Save here. And I'm just going to go in one more time and click Edit just to show you this. And you'll see that my field is locked. OK, I can't change this. I'm trying to erase it. It's not erasing. But I can change my field name. OK, I can say city where they live. OK, it's a very long and no, useless name. but this can be changed. Okay, I can change that. But the the um, the key itself won't change. And this is kind of important because if the key could change, then that means that you could actually break your code from the back end from your dashboard. But this kind of prevents that from happening. And I do recommend keeping the field name and the field key pretty similar. Otherwise, you'll get yourself very confused. Okay, so that's a bit about how to add a new field. And this field type is very versatile. So it could be text, it could be image. Okay, image would be a URL either to um, a image on your Wix website or another image online. And media gallery. Okay, so that could be uh, multiple images. Uh, Boolean. Boolean means either true or false. This would be good for a value that either needs to be existent or non-existent. You can see here the example of a check checkbox, for example. Um, and different data types will be the correct data type to for a field that's linked to a certain input, for example. If you have a text input, then the field has to be text. Otherwise, you'll have some issues. If you have a checkbox input, then the field will have to be Boolean because otherwise you'll have issues. Uh, same goes for number, uh, date, and time. Which content would be content that does not only include text, but it could also include images and other things. Uh, and rich text would be text that is styled in a certain way. Uh, it's underlined, it's bold. Um, but it doesn't necessarily include anything beyond text. Reference and multi-reference are probably some of the most useful, but also the more complex uh, field types in Wix. And they basically are field types that are referencing other collections. And this is a way that you can link between collections. And I won't get too much into it right now, but it's very useful. Um, and essentially what it is, is basically a either an array or a reference to a specific ID of a collection. Um, and after that, we have URL, we have documents, you know, PDF, um, Word document, etc. 
video, audio, address, tags, and the last two are array and object, which are both uh, different uh, JavaScript data types. And an array basically is a long list of different values. And an object is a also a list of values, but with keys and values. So you they're, they're um, named values in a way. Uh, and these would really be if you were trying to store a bulk of data that doesn't really need its own field and doesn't really need to be very visual for you when you are looking at your data in the table format. Okay, so that's just a brief run through of all the different uh, data types. And let's just check out this, read, uh, this rich content just to give you an idea of what it looks like. So if I make this into rich content uh, and I go over here in order to edit the rich content, then you'll see I get this pop-up and I can add lots of different stuff to this rich content here. I can add um, text. I can add, um, you know, a, a link. I can add images. I can add video. Okay, so think of this as maybe a, a blog post or just some kind of rich content that you want to just display on your website uh, as is. And that's really what rich content is here. So it's very uh, flexible. Uh, and my guess that this is actually HTML um, data. So if we were to like inspect this data, um, which we can later on, we would see that this is actually uh, saved as HTML. Okay, so that's a bit about the different fields. Uh, and you'll see here that on the right side, inside of manage fields, um, we see a list of all our fields and there are four fields which are not showing in our table. Uh, and we can, you know, decide which fields we want to display and not display. But there are four system fields that are not displayed by default. Uh, and that is ID. So if I display it, you'll see it's this long string of random numbers. And that is the ID of this item. And it's actually very useful and very important to be familiar with this because this is how you'll reference this item using code. Uh, the next is created date. So it's the date on which this item was created. The next is a updated date. So anytime you make a change to this item, the updated date will change to that specific date. Uh, and date here includes time. And owner is the person that created this item. And this is also very important because this will also tell you, for example, if we set our permissions to uh, member owner, then only that member whose ID is here inside of the owner field will be the one who can edit that field. And if you create the items over here inside of your collection in the dashboard, then you will be the owner. Okay, so whoever you're logged in as on your Wix account will be the owner of these items. Uh, and if you want the items to be owned by someone else, then they will have to be created either from the front end of your website or by another, uh, another person on your website. Um, so that's a little bit about who the owner is when you create the items in the dashboard. Another really important thing that you can do with collections is upload a CSV file, uh, Excel file with data, and it will create a collection for you using that data, or you can match it to specific fields that you created in advance. So let me show you how that's done. First of all, I'm just going to delete this field that we created here. And title, I have to leave because you always have to have a one least, at least one field, which is the primary field. You can see it's marked here by a small flag. But I will delete these two items that I have in the collection. I'm going to close this Manage Field thing on the side. And I'm going to go to More Actions, Import CSV. And I'm going to import, uh, sorry. I clicked accidentally on export content to a file. So that's also something that you can do. Uh, if you have a collection, you can export it all out to a CSV. But what I wanted to do was to import a CSV. And that's here. That's sorry, this top one, import items. So I accidentally clicked here on export to CSV. What we want to do is to import items. And then we can go and we can 
select this file of mock data. And you'll see here that on the right, I have a list of the field names as they are in my file. And for some reason, this one was not collected. So I want to import that. And let's see. So for each one, ID replace with imported items that I do not want to import. And first name. And for each of my fields, you can see that I have the choice if I want to match it to an existing field or I want to match it uh, or if I want to create a new field. And I want to create a new field and I'll call this one file ID. Okay, because that's the file, that's the ID that was in the file. And these are already being or imported as new fields. And this city I want to import also as a new field, which I'll call city. And image is being imported as image field. Okay. Um, can't follow following because this misconfigured city. Okay, why is city misconfigured? Let's say city new. Okay. And I'll import that. So let's go ahead and import everything and showing you here what each um, collection field will be called. And let's import. Great. So now I have a thousand rows here. So it might take a minute or two just to import, not, not a minute or two, but a few seconds to import all the rows into my collection. And in one moment, you will see the collection here complete with fields that are populated with my data. Okay, so you'll see that I have here the file ID. I have first name, last name, email, gender, IP address, city new, and image. And you can see here now that I'm not really using this title anymore. So what I could do is just transfer that over here to file ID. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to say, I can't make this primary because only text fields can be primary. So let's make the first name primary. And then I can go ahead and delete this title field. Okay, so I don't think it's best practice to keep the title field that's the default in Wix um, because you know you don't always have a title in every file and uh, in our, every kind of collection and you should really only have fields that you need. Um, okay, so now I have a example collection and you can see here all of the data and then we can go ahead and use this data on our website and for that you'll need to watch the next video. So if you like this explanation, please don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.